Hey guys, I am here for my May wrap. And the power went out. Okay. Universe says, nope, we don't want to wrap up. Well, guess what, Universe? You're getting a wrap up. That's what's happening. So, power, if you could stay on, that'd be super cool. Um, so, this past month, I think it's safe to say that I uh, got out of not even a reading slump that I was in, but I got full force into reading this month. Bring it, reading. So I read 12 books this month, and that makes me feel a lot better about my large book haul that I acquired also, because I feel like I somewhat evened out. Does it help my TBR pile? Not really, but you know, I mean, it's at least breaking even, almost. But uh, yeah, so 12 books. I am going to chalk it up to the fact that I drove a lot, and that means I listened to a lot of books. So I'm gonna slip some pictures in here, I guess, of the books that I don't actually have to hold up. Um, so let's just get into it. So I guess it's safe to say that I got into like a Colleen Hoover frenzy this month, because I read, I don't even know how many books of hers I read. I probably read like five of them. I pretty much was using her to get me excited about reading again because even though her books are all very similar, they're all really adorable and really quick to read, as in I can sit down and read them in like one sitting. So that's pretty much what I did. The first book that I read in the month of May was Confess by Colleen Hoover. Um, I, I don't know if I should give synopsis synopsises, synopsises, plural of synopsis, that word. Um, I don't know if I should give summaries, there we go, of her books because I'm gonna be honest, they're all pretty similar. They're all a new adult romance story about a girl who meets a guy, there's undeniable chemistry between them, but there is something in one of their past or that is currently going on that is preventing them from being together. And then, of course, they overcome said obstacle and then fall madly in love. And that's not really a spoiler. That's kind of how new adult books work, to be honest. Um, so as far as Confess goes, I gave it three stars. I really enjoyed it. Um, that one is revolving around art. He is an artist. I feel like all of her books kind of have, like, themes kind of some sort of artistic outlet, I guess, or some sort of dark past is what the guys are generally involved in. And then there is a girl who meets them and is like, oh man, they're amazing. Story continues. So yeah, so I read Confess. I gave that one three stars. Um, the next book that I listened to is The Golem and the Ginny by Helene Wecker. Um, it was a very like... I want to say culturally immersive type book. Um, I'm trying to get more into historical fiction and this kind of put me there, I guess. It's set in around the turn of the century, I guess, right around 1900. Um, it deals with two main characters. The one, the woman is a golem who is a creature essentially made out of clay to serve a master. But it's basically this woman was made to be a wife of a man and on the ship that is bringing them to America to start their lives together as a married couple, he dies. So she pretty much ends up in New York City in like 1899, 1900 um, with really no knowledge of the world and has to figure out how to function in it, being a golem and can't really let people know her secret. And then there is also a Ginny kind of what we know of as a genie, um, who is discovered in a flask by a tinsmith who is um, supposed to repair the flask and releases this genie. Um, and the story is kind of both of them ending up in New York and having to figure out how to function in this human world where they don't belong really. And of course they end up meeting each other and I really enjoyed it because it was one of the very few books that it was a strictly platonic friendship between a man and a woman or a golem and a ginny. Um, I gave this book three stars. I enjoyed the experience. I'm glad that I had read it, but it was dry at some parts. And honestly, if I were not listening to it, I probably would have had a hard time picking it up and reading it. Um, so it was, it was good. I'm glad I read it. And yeah, that's it. The next book that I read in May is The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. This book. Holly Black gets me every time. 
she is really good at writing books that are kind of fitting into the trend of whatever YA books are out then and completely changing them. Like you go into this expecting it to be like this fairy tale retelling type book and as you're reading it you're like all oh, right it's Holly Black it's gonna be nothing like I expect it's gonna be this and then it ends up being something completely different and you're just like well I'm along for the ride let's see where this goes. She is so good at completely different stories and at writing standalones. Just a quick summary, it's about this town that is honestly like a modern regular kids go to high school and party town, but there are fae involved. But there's a boy in a glass coffin in their woods that everybody parties around and has spent centuries trying to wake up and of course he wakes up and that's pretty much where the story takes off. And it's a quick read. I read it in pretty much like a day. Um, I gave this four out of five stars. It's really good and it's really gorgeous. <laughs> the next book that I read is Don't Look Back by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I pretty much am in a kick of reading anything by her just since I read the Lux series and I've read a couple of her adult books and everything. Her writing is just so entertaining. It's Nothing phenomenal, but it's enough to hold my attention. This is a YA book about a girl named Sam who pretty much wakes up and has no memory of who she is or anything in her life. And people tell her that she went missing with her best friend and she came back and her best friend did not. And the story is pretty much about her trying to figure out what happened and and she kind of starts to learn that she didn't really like who she was before she lost her memory. So she's kind of getting a second chance at life to be a better person. Um, I gave this book three out of five stars. The next book that I read is Hopeless by Colleen Hoover. Surprise! It's another Colleen Hoover. Don't worry, there are more coming, I promise. Um, <laughs> I think this is one of her earlier books that she wrote. Um, and same same thing as before. There's a girl who meets a boy, they have instant chemistry, there's something from your past that prevents them from being together. Hopeless. Um, I gave it three out of five stars. I liked it. Same, same spiel. I have a lot of three star books this month. A lot of things held my attention and I was excited to read them, but they didn't blow me away. So that's, that's pretty much the uh, tone for this wrap up. The next book that I listened to is All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. Um, I gave this four out of five stars. It was heavier than I thought it was gonna be. Um, it's pretty much about a girl named Violet and a boy named Finch who meet at the edge of a rooftop, which I mean kind of sets the tone for how dark the story is gonna be but they end up being put together in a school project to, to go to go discover the state that they live in and through that they kind of grow to love each other and grow to love life and there's just it's one of those books where I thought it was gonna go somewhere and then it went somewhere completely different and I actually liked where it went it turned out very uh inspiring kind of it's heavy, but it, it was good. So I gave that four out of five stars. So after reading that, I felt like I needed something way lighter and more upbeat and funny and everything. So I was just kind of browsing around Goodreads and I stumbled across the book called Virgin by, I don't even know if I should try and say her name, Radhika Sanhani. I don't know. This book, I have not laughed out loud at a book like I have with this one. It gets into the nitty gritty of being a female and it is so good. Um, it is about a girl who pretty much is finishing up her last year of uni and decides that she no longer wants to be a virgin and is the story of her kind of exploring being a female and sexuality and everything. But it is so raw and graphic and great. It's so funny. Pretty much, if you have a vagina, this book will apply to you. It describes scenes, not even sexual, but just scenes that every girl has to go through in her lifetime so <laughs> bluntly 
and you can appreciate it so much because I feel like everybody has been in those situations and I literally was dying laughing. I It was to the point where I was listening to it with headphones on in my house and everybody was just like, what are you laughing at? I'm like, I can't even tell you. I gave this book four out of five stars. It was hilarious. Can you guys guess what the next book is? It's a Colleen Hoover book, woo! So I read Ugly Love. This one is my favorite one that I think I've read by her. Um, I gave this one four out of five stars. It was way heavier than I feel like her other books were. Um, Hopeless was pretty dark, but I feel like Ugly Love hit home. I feel like it was way more relatable, I think. And I think it's about to be a movie. That's what everybody's saying. That's what the word is. Um, but again, Colleen Hoover, girl meets boy. One of them has a really dark past and can't be in a relationship and then they end up in a relationship, go figure. Um, really liked that one. That one was very good. Then after Ugly Love, of course I stayed on the Colleen Hoover kick and I read Losing Hope and then Finding Cinderella because, I mean, I already read Hopeless so I might as well finish off this kind of little series that she has going on. Losing Hope is the same story as Hopeless but told from the guy's perspective. But it's not like all the other ones where it's just the guy's perspective of the same story. It gives a lot more background into him and his past and everything. So I appreciated seeing that side. I gave this one three stars. And then Finding Cinderella is a novella about their friends. And it is like a really, really funny, really quick read. I actually gave this one four stars, which is more than I gave Hopeless and Losing Hope because this book made me laugh out loud. The characters were so enjoyable and it was just so lighthearted and happy compared to these. So I liked that it kind of picked the series up. So four out of five stars. I'm almost done guys, I swear. I'm getting there. Um, the next book I read is Everything That Makes You by Mariah McStay. This is the book that came in the April Owl Crate, I believe. Um, this book is told in dual perspective from the same girl. Um, it's pretty much like she had an accident when she was a child and it's told that and it tells that side of the story and then it tells if that accident had never happened to her what her life would have been like and how the two stories kind of parallel each other. Um, it was really thought-provoking and intriguing. I really liked it. It didn't turn out how I expected it to. I thought it was going to be much deeper and more inspiring than it was, but I actually was pleasantly surprised with how this came out. I feel like it was a complete story, but I feel like it was just missing something. I don't know. I gave it three out of five stars just because I really liked it and it made me think a lot, but I feel like it could have been more. Yeah, that's pretty much what I think about it. And the last book that I read in May, and I finished listening to it actually like yesterday, so it just kind of snuck into my May wrap up. Um, and that book was Counting by Sevens by Holly Goldberg Sloan. Um, it's a middle grade book about a girl who is kind of this quirky genius, has some OCD tendencies. Um, her experience is pretty much going into middle school and then her parents die and it flips her world upside down and it's pretty much her trying to figure out how to live life and meeting new people and trying to... It's a coming of age tale, I guess. I gave it three stars. It... I've read a couple reviews and I feel like a lot of people hit the nail right on the head. It's a middle grade book, so I feel like middle grade kids would really like it and I feel like adults would really like it. The writing is beautiful, the characters are memorable and enjoyable, but I feel like being in that middle YA 20-something year old reader stance, it was hard to believe. And I know it's not supposed to be believable. It's a middle grade book. There's supposed to be characters in it that are quirky and weird, but I just felt like some of the characters in it were not believable in the real world. And it's a book, I understand it's supposed to be a story and it's not supposed to be real, but I just kind of, it, there were, it held me back from falling in love with the book, which I feel like I would have had the characters been more reliable as adults in. So yeah, that's kind of my thoughts about it. 
So it was just a three star book for me. I feel like if I reread it in probably like five to ten years, I might have a completely different view on it. But for now, I'm staying with three stars. Nope. Okay, that's it. I promise. I'm not going to talk anymore. Those were all of the gajillions of books that I read. But hey, it got me back on track with my reading challenge. So I'm actually like a book ahead now when I was like five books behind. So, so that's gonna be it for me. I'm gonna go now because I talked a lot. Hope you guys are having a good day and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.